Sport tonight, we're profiling Southern Steel mid-quarter, Philippa Finch. Right, Philippa, let's uh, start your life story. Yes. Um, right here in Belclutha. Yeah. So, what was it like growing up as a, as a small kid in a small town? Um, it was very exciting. Um, I'd have lots of friends that you could play with and it was very local and small, royal. Uh, we used to go down to the river quite a lot and swim at the lagoon and it was great fun. I used to have a lovely child lifestyle. It was fantastic. Did you, uh, obviously playing netball, cold days, cold mornings, outside courts, I yep. you remember that clearly. Yeah, very clearly. The Dereva courts, they used to be called, um, very cold. I remember going down there with track pants on and my nice little pleated skirt over top of my pants, very cold. Sometimes it would just be absolutely freezing, um, but you just do it because you love the sport and everyone did it and it was great. So it was primary school here, which primary school locally? I went to Rosebank Primary School, yeah, right. locally, and then South Otago High School. Okay, yep. so um, at what stage did you start playing that ball? Probably right from the very beginning? I, no, not at the beginning. I was a hockey player actually, I played mini hockey. Um, about 10 I started playing that ball, so it was a uh, medium age, but okay. yeah. And when did you sort of start playing competitively once you got to high school? Did it start getting serious? It did. Um, when I started, probably about when I was fifth form, it started to get quite competitive and I started playing um, South Otago rep stuff and Otago country it was called back then. Mm. Um, it started to get quite serious and yeah, I started to really look at my netball career. Right. And that was always in the mid-court, was it? Yeah, yeah, I suppose I've always kind of been short. I've never really <laughs> had the joys of being tall when I was um, little, but yeah, mid-court always been my position, yeah. When did you start um, thinking you might have to take this very seriously and, and, and concentrate on it, um, not almost full-time? Uh, when I left school, um, I went to Dunedin to study. I also played hockey as well, and um, that was the stage where I had to think, well, hang on a minute, I've got netball here and hockey. I can't do both to be really good at the sport I wanted to choose, so I had, it had to be netball. I just decided I wanted to go hard at that sport, and yeah, it was a tough decision because my family obviously have been hockey supporters and players, and. It was a tough decision, but I decided netball was the way to go. So was it um, well, teacher training in Otago, was it? Yeah, I mm. actually went to the Sports Institute at the Otago Polytech initially, when I first left school. And then after I'd done my two years study at the Institute, um, I thought I'd like to be a teacher. So then I went to te Teachers College in Dunedin for three years. Right. Yeah. And is that when you hooked up with the Rebels? Yeah, the Rebels was, uh, yeah, that was the team back then. Um, when I first left school, yeah, that was when I started to get into the Rebel squad and yeah, and the team and stuff. All right, tell us about your yeah, first experience at that uh, was a National Bank Cup level. Yeah, uh, I remember Lois Muir was the coach, um, very tough lady. I was very young. There was a lot of senior players in the team. Um, that's how I was pretty scared, that's for sure. But. I learnt so much from all the experienced players that were in the team and it was it was fantastic to be involved, especially with Lois Muir as the coach. It was fantastic. And a competitive unit? Very yeah, competitive it unit. was very, mm. back then, yeah, it mm. was very competitive. Um, there, there was lots of players that were really, really good in the team um, and obviously I sat on the bench for a very long time but that was obviously the way Lois played the game and which was fine, I learnt, you learn a lot, um, a lot of skills and stuff just to be on the bench but um, yeah it was fantastic. So you got to be a regular starter though eventually? Yeah I did yeah mm. eventually I obviously got my time and took up the opportunity and yeah I was on the court quite regularly which was fantastic and I loved every moment of being a part of the Rebels team it was it was brilliant. And how was balancing work and and play in those days? Yeah it's I was thinking about it the other day actually and it was pretty full on I remember I used to teach down at Rosebank School and I had to we were travelling back and forth every day and then I, by the time I got home I had to go to Rebels training as well so it's, it was pretty full on when I think about it now, um, there's no way you'd be able to do it in this um, competition but yeah it was amazing how so, you just adapted. So you taught at the school you went to? Yeah I did, did. yeah. <laughs> how strange was that? It was very strange because... All the chairs looked a lot smaller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in the staff room, when you walk into the staff room it was very unusual but it were there just, any teachers left? Yeah, there were. Oh, there that's were, even strange. There were. There was quite a few teachers that actually had taught me 
but it was just obviously that was the only place I could get a job after leaving Teachers College. It's quite difficult to find um, a job as a beginning teacher, but they were, they were really great. They took me on board and I was more than happy just to get my two years registration. And so I lived in Dunedin and travelled back and forth to Bakluthu every day. Mm. But luckily mum and dad lived down here, so some days I would just stay with them, which was fantastic. Mm. Yeah. All right, um, what about the move to Christchurch? Uh, that would have been a, uh, a, a big, dr um, a major decision in your life. It was a very tough decision. Um, obviously with the Rebels joining up with the Southland Sting team to make the steal, um, I had to either make the decision to be with the steel or go somewhere else and the tactics actually approached me and I was pretty adamant that I'd never want to play for a Canterbury team. I was <laughs> true blue and gold through and through my, through my um, blood. But uh, I ne yeah, I needed to make that decision. Where was I going to get the best court time, um, the players around me. Um, Julie Seymour was obviously a big draw card, I wanted to play with her. So it was a big step and we made the decision, my husband and I, we moved to Christchurch. I actually travelled the first year back and forth from Dunedin to, to Christchurch for the first season and then yeah, we decided to move up there. Mm. Mm. And um, did you get straight into the starting lineup? Was it sort of regular play from the word go? Yeah, I did for a start. The first season I was initially in the starting lineup, and then the following year there was a few new players and recruited into the team and then I actually sat on the bench for quite a while um, and that was challenging especially being a little more experienced being on the bench but you take the opportunities you just got to train hard and, and I was on, on the starting lineup um, quite regularly after that so. So that was a, a more of a professional era the National Bank Cup considerably of course so then you had a regular teaching job as well so even harder to juggle. Yeah it was yeah it was and I needed to um, keep in contact with my teaching career because I didn't want to stop it completely. I mean, it's something that you can go away from the sport and just um, think about other things and teaching was great to do that. And that, as a teacher, it's quite flexible with sport. They'll let you, you know, take time out to go away for the weekends to play your sport. So teaching is, yeah, it's a good, good thing to do. Mm. Because while it's a, uh, a full-time job while you're doing it, there's lots of time in the year where you're not, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's, yeah, the, you're dead right. It's, yeah, it can be, it's, a, it's a good balance, that's mm. for sure. Mm. Yeah. Well, tell us about the other sporting connections. Um, talking to you before we recorded with uh, Chris Finch and Regan Finch, they're footballers that a lot of our viewers will know. Yeah, um, so Regan's my husband. Um, he played rugby for Otago. Um, he's a through black and white Pirates um, Dunedin Club member um, and then obviously he went to Northland to play his NPC um, rugby in Marlborough and then his brother Chris Finch he um, is a very good cricketer he played for Otago for cr cricket and he also played rugby for North Otago so very sporty Finch family um, and Hayden Finch the middle, middle brother he's also a rugby and cricket um, competitive player as well so yeah. Are they still active? In, in they, um, I wouldn't say Regan's very active in the <laughs> rugby side of things. He's into his golf at the moment yeah, which yeah. is quite fun because he's drawn me into it and I've got my own set of golf clubs and he comes to mum and dad's and he, and he whacks the ball over the field to see how far he can drive it but he's starting to get more active in his rugby again um, just to keep him active and fit and stuff yeah. Mm. All right, we should talk about the move south, back home, you'd have to say, back to the steel. How did that come about? Um, yeah, well, actually, I got a phone call from one of the players just to say, look, what's the situation with your netball and would you be keen to come down and play for the steel? And I was actually a bit shocked. I thought, oh, you know, what, why? Um, and then I, we obviously discovered that Wendy was pregnant. Um, and then it was a it was a tough decision because I had started my career in teaching again and I was working full time and I was loving it. Um, a great school that I was teaching in Sumner in Christchurch. Um, so it was a tough decision. I had to decide whether obviously I wanted to come back after my um, ACL surgery that I had on my knee. Um, but I thought, you know, playing for the steel definitely I would always wanted to come back home and do something for my community and for my for the team that I'd originally played for so yeah it was it was a good decision that's for sure. And basing yourself here in Bear you're right on the border aren't oh, you? Right in the Close middle of enough, it. Yeah. yeah right smack bang <laughs> in the middle of it. Um, it's fantastic I could just go to Dunedin it's not too far and then when we go to Invercargill it's 
It's in the middle as well, so it's Barclays is a good base. Yeah. You'd have been disappointed though with the way it finished with the tactics. Yeah, yeah it was a bit um, tough. Obviously, with the the communication skills weren't the best in the way that they dealt with me not re-signing. Um, there was there was nothing in in that kind of was a bit tough because I had a good, solid relationship with Tactics for the last four years. Mm. Um, and to be kind of thrown out like that without being told anything was quite disappointing. Um, so that I just moved on pretty quickly. Um, I was happy, I was starting to do different types of training and I was happy with my career teaching. So you move on from these things and hopefully the Tactics have learnt. And it's good for you to know that when you came, you were going to be used. Exactly, you yeah. Just on the bench and fill the gap. Yeah. You, you had to be I was, employed straight away. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I'm, I was knew that I'd want to help. You know, I've obviously got plenty of experience under my belt, and you know, I wanted to help the team. And obviously, I'd known Janine for a long time, and you know, just to help her out as well. Um, yeah, I felt like it was a really mm. good move. And you've got uh, broader experience. You were in the Accelerator squad, was it called? Yeah, uh, well, it was the New Zealand Day. I was in that team mm. for quite a while. Um, we got to go to the pre Commonwealth Games in Australia and in Melbourne, and that was pretty exciting to play against some of the other teams. And um, Accelerant squad I was involved in as well, and that was um, just something obviously that they incorporated instead of the New Zealand Day. And, yeah, it was. It's good experience to obviously be involved with the Silver Fern camps and the trainings and and all that sort of side of the things. But no, it was. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a real mix in this steel team. You've got people who've played a lot of internationals. You've got a couple of players with all due respect no one had heard of before this yeah. year. And there's you sort of in the middle, isn't yeah, it? So you've got yeah. the. So what's it like as a blend? It's great actually. Um, I forget how much experience the team actually have, with especially those ex Silver Ferns and obviously Demelza being an ex Australian. Um, and then, yeah, you do have the the young young guns um, that have just shown up uh, out of the woodwork. Um, and then there's yeah me in the middle, but it's a fantastic combination. Everyone works really well together. Um, everyone's keen to learn. Everyone's keen to help, and it's a brilliant team environment. Yeah. What about the competition this year? To me, as an outsider, no netball expert, it's far more interesting because of the uh, the favourites getting beaten early and no one knows who's going to win in any yeah. given weekend. It's great, absolutely fantastic. And the New Zealand teams are being um, way more competitive with the Australians compared to what previously it's been. Um, yeah, it makes the competition a whole lot more exciting with, you know, you've got the Magic that are at the bottom of the table, um, who've previously been in contention to win the competition. So yeah, it makes it a whole lot more exciting. Great for the viewers, great for the teams. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. That gap we always talk about in New Zealand and Australia, is it, is it slowly creeping together, do you believe? Yeah. Seriously, honestly? Yeah, no, I do. I do believe that um, the Australians initially were a way above um, New Zealand netball, but now I think New Zealanders are definitely um, up there now with the Australians. And I think this competition has definitely helped um, you know, we're being more competitive um, and that's just showing with the competition and where everyone is sitting on the table. When you look back, um, do you have any reservations you didn't follow hockey and you took the netball one because um, the hockey girls have yeah. got lots of exposure these days, aren't they? I do, actually. I was thinking about that the other day and thinking, what what would it be like if I was playing for the Black Sticks now? Or did you get close? Did you play rep hockey? Did you I get, did, yeah, yeah. I played rep hockey for mm. Otago. Mm. Um, yeah, so it was... Yeah, a good passion of mine, um, but hey, you can't turn back time. Um, I probably wish I continued playing club hockey, mm. and then especially with Canterbury, it's quite a strong sport in mm. Canterbury, and I always like driving past and checking out who's playing at the hockey turf. And but hey, you can't do you, you can't you can't plan your future. So well, let's mm. talk about uh, Christchurch a little bit because obviously you were there at some of the most traumatic moments. Yeah. Um, and what was the impact on you and, and, and you know, the physical world around yeah, you? Yeah, it was pretty emotional. Um, the first experience I had, we were with the team at Curie 2 Stadium and that got really badly damaged and <coughs> and it was... Um, oh, it's sorry. Right. No, it's okay, you just carry on. That's the way it goes. Um, it? Yeah. Come here, come here, come here. And... Um, Yes, yeah, so I was at Kirito and it was it was very traumatising. Um, our house was quite badly damaged as well, and my husband wasn't around at the time. So when I got home, there was liquefaction everywhere, and it was it was a terrible mess. And obviously, I didn't have him to uh, support me and be around. So it was difficult difficult times. But um, come here, come here. 
It's pretty messy, that's for sure. Yeah. The old Canterbury, yeah. What about the future of your house and everything? Do you know where you're going? Um, we are classed the worst it could po possibly be, unfortunately. <laughs> we're the um, T3, which is the green blue. So we're in the unsure stages of our house. We've got a lot of damage. Um, we're obviously living in it, which is fine. Um, but the land has to be assessed and it's going to take a long, long, slow process mm. for them to sort it all out. But we're pretty, we're pretty positive. We're just, um, you know, continuing on with our lives and it's hard work, that's for sure. Mm. Um, especially when it rains and you've got water just pouring inside and <laughs> they're just things that are just a, a pain in the bum pretty much. But and it kind of been uh, easy for the team to try and play last year with worrying about what's at home uh, and no, playing together. That would have been a no, nice was, testing time. It was very testing. And you wouldn't get much sleep either because there would just be earthquakes in the middle of the night. It would just wake you up and then you'd have to get up to go to training. And it was pretty, pretty tough. And then obviously we didn't have a facility. Um, so we were traveling everywhere, going to different places. And yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. It wasn't, it wasn't the most enjoyable year last mm. year, but move on. Yeah, and it sort of uh, brings reality you know, and the important things uh, to fruition, doesn't it? And what's important in life and sport isn't it that important? Does yeah, definitely. I've definitely looked at things completely different, um, and yeah, it's you, you wonder what this world is about. Sometimes, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. It's pretty scary, but you can only do what you. You're here to do so. Most of the time, it's okay though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to take exactly. that approach. Eh? <laughs> you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's mostly pretty good. So, how far do you plan ahead? You, obviously, this season you didn't expect to be where you are. So, I suppose it's hard to think more than the next couple of games. It is. Yeah. No, it is quite tricky. You kind of I've learnt now not to, you know, plan too much ahead and just go day by day and just enjoy life and. Um, yeah, obviously, once the season's finished, I'll go back to Christchurch and just carry on with my teaching career. And play NBC? Will you play NBC? Not too, too sure mm -hmm. yet. Um, I'll have to figure that out. But um, I quite like my time away from the sport, mm. you know, when I can get it. So we'll wait and see, yeah. With teaching skills and, and high-class playing skills, the suggestion that coaching might be in, in, the, in the future, perhaps? Not sure. Um, I do enjoy coaching the children at school. I'm mean, organising all the future funes at Sumner School, so it's quite enjoyable in that respect. And I'm, I help the year seven and eight, um, year seven and eight out um, with the netball. So who knows? I don't think I'll do coaching to the extent of a ANZ champs, but primary school is probably as far as it gets. Mm. All right, you've got to finish by telling us something about yourself that the team won't know, and they're only going to find out now. When I was at high school, I was a bit of a goody two shoes. I was a deputy um, head girl, and I got caught in my parents' basement with my friends, um, bunking school, and the principal actually came to my house and caught us, and I was a very naughty girl, and I got told off. It's not going to get you arrested. So take that. <laughs> it's not very exciting. <laughs>